All right, let's finish up with Blazor. So Blazor is the new normal .NET application type. If you're creating a new application, what's it going to be? It's going to be Blazor. It almost doesn't even, well, if it has a UI. If it has a UI, it's going to be Blazor. If it's just behind the scenes processing messages, then it's not. But if it has a UI, it's going to be Blazor. That is smartphone, iPad, Mac, Windows desktop, um, web, uh, static website. It's going to be Blazor. Um, they brought everything back together. One of the holdouts was static server rendering where you, know, you might still use a, a ASP.NET MVC for just static websites or, or, or use Razor pages. And now that has been brought under the component model of Blazor for static rendering. So um, this there's all kinds of nuances to Blazor. And if you're still not up on Blazor and all its capabilities, Microsoft has a lot of content there, but go to blazertrain.com and watch those 100 plus videos from Carl Franklin describing in detail everything about Blazor. Um, and, uh, architecturally the biggest news and the biggest impact to your team is that you can have one skill set and develop any type of application. That's huge. Uh, I think we have probably a decade of lots of people learning, uh, JavaScript frameworks for interactive web applications because Microsoft left the door open. They had ASP.NET MVC and they had, you know, Ajax. Um, but then there was no resident stateful model and, you know, some really um, innovative JavaScript frameworks came out. Uh, Knockout kind of being the first significant one. And of course, Angular, React, Vue, and we have lots of flavors and lots of versions of all of those. Um, but uh, one of the first ones, Knockout JS, which by the way, Steve Sanderson built that. And then Steve Sanderson uh, was one of the main leaders in building, literally building the Azure portal. And he designed the Azure portal with Knockout. He learned a ton about stateful web applications in that project. And then he basically harvested his learnings and created the Blazor component model, taking the lineage and the binding of everything that he had learned at Knockout, doing a major, major software project in the Azure portal, and then saying, you know what? This is the web framework that I really want, that I really want to use. And then he designed it, and now we're all using it. Um, so uh, regardless of regardless of what you're using for web applications architecturally i would say i would say start planning for a consolidation to blazer the advantages are too great it's not hey i like blazer versus i like this no i'm making an economic argument here and if you're running a team you have to think about economics if you can do all of your software using a single type or a single category of skill set of developer, then you're going to get more productivity out of the entire team. Instead of having to have some, you know, some number of developers that are deep on the JavaScript stack and all of those libraries, and then others that are, you know, deeper on .NET. Um, now you can have .NET, c -sharp developers, and I am making an assumption, most people have, you know, most developers in today's day and age have gotten fairly strong at HTML and CSS. Okay, given that, and to the extent that assumption is correct in your team, then you've got a core skill set of C Sharp, .NET, HTML, okay? And throw in some CSS, but if you're weak on that, you can get designers to help you. And then you can build any type of software um, with the Blazor model. You can run just regular static server rendered uh, server side websites. You can write spa applications. You can have entire client, rich client applications that are launched from a browser. You can run native applications wrapped in a WinForms or WPF shell 
on the Windows desktop that are all, every screen is Blazor. You can write little programs that run in a system tray icon in a system tray WPF project type, but whatever screens they pop up are just Blazor. Um, you can write the, the Maui applications with Blazor. And so now you can, uh, you can run and you can write every application type that has a user interface with the same developer skill set, the same programming model, the same design patterns, and largely the same mix of libraries across all of them. That is huge. That is huge. So um, it's it's kind of hard to ignore it. Um, and that's that's the economic argument. That's not I like A versus I like B, or I think this is you know, the nebulous term elegant, and this is not. Um, it's really economically, it makes too much sense. And if you know the option is available to to you, run to it. Um, and if you have you know fragmented skill sets, start you know start planning for consolidation. Um, Microsoft has published a lot of upgrade paths to Blazor. That content is out there. Um, but you can, you know, it's it's pretty well known how to move from the older older application types to Blazor. Okay. Uh, 